there were some trees left in the field which we did dig and we got this ready this morning it took about two hours to get the field ready and this is michael hurst at highland hill farm all right my name is mike i'm here at highland hill farm what i'm going to do today is we have a field that's prepared about ready to be chisel plowed which is what i'm going to do right now it's not really chisel plowed it's subsoil i'm doing and subsoil is like you got a subsoil on the back here with one great big tooth that goes down two or so feet down into the ground and that's going to break up the soil the real hard soil underneath the subsoils and the compacted soils underneath and let the oxygen get down into it makes it more aerated so when we plant our trees the trees have a deeper root zone that they can grow into other advantages of doing this too is it's not great advantages but it does affect it is when you do a plow or you do road tilling the big furrow that we make with this guy allows whatever implement that you're going to use next to get a better bite into the soil. So you can either plow deeper or road till deeper after you do this. Other things that we like also does is that it creates channels in the ground for drainage. Big, one big swipe through is going to break up one solid channel into the ground and allows the water to drain from the field faster. That's why when we start, we usually start right at the edge of the field, not where we're going to be planting, but where the field edge is at, so that it allows the drainage to go out of the field. So you go pretty close to the edge right here, and you go straight on up, all the way up as far as you can go at the other end, and you come back down, and you just make one pass with, so the procedure is that you drive up, and you have a tire mark as you go up. When you turn around, you just line up the tire mark again with the other tire mark, so it's on on top of one another and you do the field once that way then you come back and wherever the tire marks are you drive with a chisel plow and you hit the tire marks and it gives you like a, a good three foot spacing on it and it gives a good channel throughout the whole entire field it's a good uniform way of doing it and it's got a good spacing on it too we usually try to follow the way that the, the field is going to drain just so that when the water does get into the channels it's not like it's going to go into a curb, it's going to get clogged in any one of the areas. You want the water to drain from the field when you drain chisel plowing, no, subsoiling this deep. Okay, thank you very much, Mike, and now you're going to start them and show them how you do it. Oh, I'm going to adjust this first. Okay, tell them what you're doing when you adjust it. Oh, okay. Well, since this is going to be a tearing action, we want, when I drive it onto the ground and into the driveway, I don't want to tear up the driveway, so I have the angle of the with the shoe here facing upwards. So what I really want to do is I really want to have it facing downwards so it goes into the ground better. And then when I drag it through the ground, it's kind of a lifting action as it drags through. It lifts the soil on top of it and leaves a cavity behind it. And that's where the air oxygen goes and it makes it much better for the field. So when we do this, what we're going to do is we're actually going to tighten this up. This is going to push this top forward and the bottom back because it's got this pivoting action to it. So as we do this, you can see that the back is pushing back and the shoe is stretching more and more of a downward angle. Now I won't be able to lift this all the way up out of the ground after I get it really going. The only reason that it's out of the ground right now is that there's a ditch right here. But once I start getting going, I'm just going to have one continuous line wherever I go. No matter how high I pick it up, it's going to be, it's going to be dragging. So you get a nice little angle on it. You don't need something like exaggerated, but Enough to give you a little bit of an air pocket right behind this, and that's all that you really need. You go through, and you're going to be breaking up the real heavy soils. You're going to get in the air flow much deeper into the soil as well, and all then also allow for drainage. And then it also helps with the next part of the process, whether whether you're using a plow or a rotator. Okay, thank you very much, Mike.
Now he's dragging a lot of brush, but it'll it'll clean itself out. Because it's just all do there. But there'll be less and less drag of of uh, brush and grass as he goes along because it's a little bit better brush hog as he goes down the field a little bit. We've done two passes with a rototiller and we're picking stones out of the field right now and trash and we have over here our used irrigation lines that we'll put in as soon as we plant the trees because it's very hot and dry and we'll need to have drip water lines on those as soon as they're planted. This is the field right after planting, and if you notice, it rained just a little bit right after we got finished, but not enough to really do a lot of watering of the plants, but enough just to give them some moisture. And we planted about 500 of them right here. And uh, this will be in here for about three to four years, and then we'll start digging them out. We'll go along here later this week and we'll put in a drip water line. And after that, we'll, we'll restake them again. We'll tamp them in to make sure that they're straight. And we'll then come back through with some herbicide or pre-emergence to kill any grass that starts to grow back up. And that's how we do it. Thank you.